Ever since Michael Crichton's novel and the subsequent 1993 movie based on it, Jurassic Park, Amber has seen an exponential rise in popularity. But what is Amber? And for that matter, what's Copel? It's Doppelganger. How do you tell Amber and Copel apart? We'll discuss that and more today, but first, I'm in the process of refining and bringing my channel and business up to the next level. It's quite the process and I appreciate your patience with it, but how can you help? By smashing that like button, subscribing, hitting the real subscribe button, and then tossing me a comment real quick. I want to bring you more Jam and Mineral content, but I need your help to do it. Let's go. So what is Amber? Let's take a look at the clip that started the craze and then go from there. Sometimes, after biting a dinosaur, the mosquito would land on the branch of a tree and get stuck in the sap. Eh, we'll get to that in a moment. After a long time, the tree sap would get hard and become fossilized, just like a dinosaur bone. There is a common misconception in this clip that needs to be addressed. Amber's not tree sap. All trees and a lot of plants have tree sap to some degree or another. It's the sugary fluids that transport nutrients throughout the tree. Since it's mostly water, the sap doesn't tend to stay around long before being absorbed into the ground or otherwise washed away. However, some trees, cedars, pines, firs, etc. produce resin as well. Resin is a much more thick fluid and will stick <laughs> around a lot longer than sap. There has been debate on the purpose of resin, but it's likely a defense mechanism against pests and damage and acts like a scab does for us. When one of these trees dies, it leaves behind sticky resin that can fossilize. There are ancient, very similar tree species that did the exact same thing in the past. Amber was tree resin that went through a lengthy fossilization period. The volatile organic material being removed over time. However, it's not enough for that material to just be removed. The amber also had to polymerize, meaning polymers had to form. And this takes a very, very long time. 100,000 years at least. Most true amber is millions of years old, with the oldest known types of amber being around 300 million years old. So what about the fossilized tree resin that doesn't have this polymerization. The resin that's say five or 10,000 years old, well that's called copal. In its natural form, copal can easily be distinguished from amber. It generally has a softer color and will become tacky or sticky when rubbed with acetone. However, from some locations, it's processed with an autoclave like some of the Baltic amber is today and becomes a bit harder to distinguish after the fact. Copal is quite aromatic and people use it for incense pretty frequently, even today. A practice that was common amongst the indigenous peoples of Mexico and Central America that would burn copal specifically during sweat lodge ceremonies or other ceremonies? Uh, now this has to be a mushroom. So in short, amber is a very old and polymerized tree resin while copal is much younger. Both are very beautiful and can include various organisms and inclusions. Speaking of, that's really what you want to know about, isn't it? What kind of animals have been found in amber or copal? And the answer is quite a lot. Various amounts of plant matter, a wide variety of insects like termites, ants, scorpions, spiders, so on and so Well, Scorpions and spiders aren't insects, but that's beside the point. Lizards are much more rare, but they have been found before. And even while not complete, the bones of some small mammals that were likely a bird's meal have been authenticated in amber before. And yes, the mosquito has been found in amber before and one such 100 million year old specimen was used to verify that mosquitoes have carried malaria for a very, very long time. However, just as with anything that has a dollar sign attached to it, fakes run rampant. There are a lot of ways to go about verifying amber, but it's often destructive, like poking it with a hot needle. If it produces a pine scent, it's real. A less destructive one is seeing if it floats in a salt solution. If it does, it's probably real. Fakes tend to be quite obvious, though. They look like something that came out of a mold with an insect or something placed directly in the center of the piece. That's pretty uncommon for real amber. The best advice I can give, though, is that if a 
price seems too good to be true, it probably is. For instance, scorpion fossils in amber are extremely rare. So the eBay listing you see on the screen is very clearly fake. Somebody tossed a scorpion in a colored resin mold and wants you to think it's real. So here's a question for you. If you could have an animal trapped in amber, what would your dream fossil be? Would you want one of the cool scorpions? Would you like a real one? Would you want a lizard? Would you want the mosquito on a cane that we all wanted when we were kids, or at least I did? Let me know in the comments. Smash the like button, hit the real subscribe button, that little bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.